Namo Amitabha Buddha. Hello everyone. So in the last video, I shared briefly how the practice of meditation, especially the practice of Nian Fu, can help us change our karma. And in this video, I'd like to look deeper on exactly how Nian Fu practice can help us change our karma. And not only that, it can also help us to be free from all karma in one lifetime if we can seek rebirth to the pure land in this lifetime. So in our everyday life, the practice of Niyam Four by reciting the name of Amitabha Buddha repeatedly is considered by many to be one of the easiest and the most effective method to help us transform our thoughts. And each thought is like a karma, it forms the karmic seeds for the future events. So by changing our thoughts, by transforming our thoughts into the name of Amitabha Buddha, which means in finite light and in finite life, it can really help us change our karma in the present and for the future. Especially if we can do it with sincerity and one heartedness. And also why I feel this is really one of the most effective methods because given how easy you can apply this, you can literally use this method in every day of your life no matter what you do, whether you're walking, you're sitting, you're eating or you're even sleeping, you can still practice this by reciting the name silently in your mind. So really, you can apply this method in every moment of your life. It's perhaps difficult for the mind to not think about anything. So if we don't think about Amitabha Buddha, then we might just be thinking about our troubles, our worries, our anxieties, etc. So that is why the practice of Amitabha recitation of Niyam Fu is really the easiest and one of the most effective method and widely applicable method for everyone in this world, no matter how busy your life is, you can still use this method in any moment of your life to help you transform your thoughts into infinite light and infinite life, which resonate with our own Buddha nature. And if we can keep the constant mindfulness of Amitabha Buddha, then there really should not be any sort of worries and troubles in our life. That is exactly how enlightenment is possible. Think about it, if in every moment of our life we can think about Amitabha Buddha all the time and with really one heartedness single-mindedly, then that really becomes Samadhi in the end. If you can really do this in every moment of your life, if you don't have other thoughts, just the thought of Amitabha Buddha, then you become enlightened. <laughs> so what is enlightenment is that in every moment of your life, you are connected with your own Buddha nature. You are connected with the infinite light and infinite life within you. Of course, a lot of us may not be able to do that. There are perhaps very few people in this world that can practice any form of meditation, including Nian Fu, to the extinction of all evil karma and to realize the emptiness of the mind. This is tremendously difficult given how long we've been trapped in the cycle of reincarnation and how many bad deeds we have committed in the past. It's perhaps impossible to dissolve all negative karma, but that is also fine too. For Nian Fu practitioners, we don't need to obtain Nian Fu Samadhi in order to seek rebirth. We seek rebirth by relying on the vows of Amitabha Buddha and we actually carry our karma with us to the Pure Land. So our karma is reflected in the nine grades of rebirth. There are nine grades of rebirth to the Pure Land and it's reflected in the time that we will see Amitabha Buddha after seeking rebirth and it's reflected in the time that how long it will take for us to realize Buddhahood after seeking rebirth to the Pure Land. Even if we carry our karma with us to the Pure Land, but all the effect of negative karma will actually lie dormant in the Pure Land. Because in order for negative karma to manifest as negative situations in our life, we also need to meet with external circumstances. But in the Pure Land, the environment there will actually not give rise to any unwholesome thoughts, let alone to say unwholesome conduct. 
So in the Amitabha Sutra, the Buddha told us that in the Pure Land, one would not even hear of the evil name, let alone to say the evil path. So in the Pure Land, there is actually no evil path. No animal ran, no hungry ghost ran, no hell ran. The birds we see in the Pure Land are actually manifested by Amitabha Buddha. There is no cycle of reincarnation in the Pure Land, very much unlike in our world. In the Pure Land, there are no evil people, no evil conduct. The environment in the Pure Land is really so pure, so magnificent that it will not give rise to any unwholesome thoughts, let alone to say unwholesome conduct. It's really a world with all bliss and no suffering, with also infinite light. The brightness of the pure land will really purify your thoughts, your mind and your conduct, will really eliminate the darkness of our mind, of our heart. So in our world, why we have people steal from others, why we have so much desire and greed and wanting, well, it's because of the sort of lack, you know, we think we don't have much, so we have to steal from others. Whereas in the pure land, everyone realizes we are in fact trillionaires ourselves. And when I say trillionaire, I don't mean money-wise. In the pure land, there is no monetary system unlike in our world. Our Buddha nature is actually the greatest treasure that one could ever have in this entire universe to realize enlightenment to realize buddhahood it's actually the greatest treasure the land of the pure land is made of gold beings in the pure land they can have whatever they want at a mere thought there is really infinite abundance they don't lack of anything it's really a world of equality we will have the golden body like that of amitabha buddha which will not be subject to sickness illness and death and we will really have infinite life also will all look the same like amitabha buddha so there is no thoughts of separation no thoughts of jealousy no thoughts of hatred because everyone looks the same you look everyone as if you are looking at yourself but don't worry you will still know who is whom because everyone in the pure land they all have the divine power so in the sutras, we will see the description of the pure land in great details and the Buddha also tells us that in that kind of environment, it is impossible to give rise to any unwholesome thoughts, let alone to say unwholesome conduct. It will really sweep away all our mind poisons, all the defilements of the mind. Although beings there can have whatever they want, but there is no mind poison of greed, no hatred, no ignorance. Everyone lives in peace and bliss and with great wisdom. Because the environment of the pure land consonant with awakening, with enlightenment, and you are in constant company with highly enlightened beings, and we will be taught by Amitabha Buddha, by high level of Bodhisattvas like Guan Yin and Mahasamaprapta, all these highly enlightened beings, and we will progress really fast on the path of enlightenment and we'll realize enlightenment really quickly there. And after that, we are free from all karma. So the Pure Land is really the ideal world, the ideal place for us to realize enlightenment to realize Buddhahood, to be free from the cycle of reincarnation, to be free from all karma, to be free from all sufferings in life, which is really our birthright. And this is really the potential within all of us. But one must not think that, okay, in that case, then I don't need to do anything in this life. I don't care about cultivating good karma in this life because I just rely on Amitabha Buddha to seek rebirth. Well, please do not think like that because if you don't have good karma, if you don't have relatively good karma, then you can't seek rebirth. In the Amitabha Sutra, it says clearly that one must not have few good roots, virtue and karma to be able to seek rebirth. So why is that? If you don't have good karma, you may never encounter this dharma. If you don't have relatively good karma, even if you encounter this dharma, you may not believe it. 
And if you don't have relatively good karma, even if you encounter the Dharma, you believe in it, but at the time of death, you might not be mindful of Amitabha Buddha for whatever reasons. Maybe because your practice might not be strong enough for you to keep the mindfulness of the Buddha or other manifestations of bad karma that happened at the time of death. So you might miss the opportunity for seeking rebirth to the Pure Land. And I'm actually going to share a few failed rebirth cases for us near-for practitioners to be alert. And that is why it's also really important for us near-for practitioners to cultivate wholesome conduct, to cultivate good karma and transfer all the merit of our good deeds towards seeking rebirth to the Pure Land. So even for those people who had committed bad deeds, who sought rebirth successfully, it was also because the manifestation of the good karma from their past life. If they had not accumulated good karma from past life, then in this life they would never even met this dharma, you know, even at the time of death. Then they would not even take belief into this dharma when they heard it at the time of death. So this also showed that they had cultivated good karma in the past despite in this life they might have committed a lot of bad deeds so just know that nothing happened by coincidence so it's really important for near for practitioners to cultivate good karma as this will help guarantee us to seek rebirth successfully to the pure land and also it will help us to obtain a higher grade of rebirth which I'll share another video about the ninth grade of rebirth. Namo Amitabha Buddha Namo Amitabha Buddha